the tibia is much the larger of the two bones. The shafts of the two bones are covered by muscles, except for the anterior medial aspect of the tibia, which lies directly beneath the skin, all the way from the knee to the ankle. The proximal end of the fibula doesn't form part of the knee joint, but its distal end forms an important part of the ankle joint, as we'll see. The tibia and fibula are held together throughout their length by the strong interosseous membrane. Above and below, they're attached at the two tibiofibular joints. The proximal tibiofibular joint is a synovial joint. The distal one is a fibrous joint. There's very little movement at either of these joints. Distally, the two bones are strongly held together by the anterior tibiofibular ligament and the posterior tibiofibular ligament. The projecting ends of the tibia and fibula, which stick out on either side of the ankle, are called the medial malleolus and the lateral malleolus. The articular surface for the ankle joint is a broad notch formed by the curved under surface of the tibia and the inner surfaces of the medial malleolus and the lateral malleolus. This is the talus. The bone below and behind it is the calcaneus or heel bone. The bone in front of the talus is the navicular bone. We'll meet the other tarsal bones shortly. Now we'll go around to the lateral view to see the talus by itself. This is the head of the talus. This is the neck. The talus has three articular surfaces, one on the head and one on the underside for the two joints of inversion and eversion, and one on top for the ankle joint. Here's the ankle joint. Let's see how it looks in the living body. Here, the loose parts of the joint capsule have been removed, leaving these thickened parts, which are the ligaments of the joint. Here's the front of the joint in plantar flexion. Here's the back of the joint in dorsiflexion. On the lateral side, the joint is held together by the posterior talofibular and anterior talofibular ligaments. On the medial side, it's held together by this massive ligament, the deltoid ligament, which attaches not only to a broad area on the talus, but also to the adjoining bones below and in front, as we'll see shortly. The ligaments of the ankle joint ensure that the talus can't rock from side to side, like this, or move backward or forward like this, relative to the tibia and fibula. Here's the ankle joint with its joint capsule intact and with the rest of the bones in place. The capsule of the ankle joint is loose on the front, and it's also loose on the back. This looseness allows for a full range of dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. We already know the talus, the calcaneus, and the navicular. In front of the navicular are the three cuneiform bones, first, second, and third. Lastly, the bone in front of the calcaneus is the cuboid bone. Now let's look at the calcaneus by itself. The posterior part of the calcaneus forms the heel. The massive calcaneal tendon, also called the Achilles tendon, is attached here. Here on the medial side, there's a projecting shelf, which the medial part of the talus sits on, called the sustentaculum tali. On the front of the calcaneus, there's an articular surface for the cuboid bone. On the upper aspect of the calcaneus, there are two articular surfaces for the talus, a small one in front, a larger one behind. The larger of these two surfaces, T1 
together with the corresponding surface on the underside of the talus, forms the subtalar joint. The head of the talus fits into a socket, which we'll see by taking the talus away. The socket is formed by this surface of the calcaneus, this surface of the navicular bone, and by a strong ligament here, which we'll see in a minute. These surfaces, together with the head of the talus, form the talo navicular joint. Here's what these joint surfaces look like in the living body. The surface for the subtalar joint and the two surfaces for the TCN joint. This structure in between, which forms part of the TCN joint, is the upper surface of the strong calcaneo-navicular ligament, also misleadingly called the spring ligament, which helps to hold up the head of the talus. It goes from here on the calcaneus to here on the navicular. The movement that happens at the subtalar and TCN joints is a rocking motion that takes place around an obliquely placed axis. This rod shows the position of the axis. It's oblique to the long axis of the foot, both in this plane and in this plane. Here's eversion. Here's inversion. Again, eversion and inversion. Now here's the whole of the deltoid ligament. This is the part we saw before, going from the medial malleolus to the talus. In addition, parts of the deltoid ligament fan out below onto the sustentaculum tali of the calcaneus and in front onto the navicular bone so that the deltoid ligament holds all four of these bones together. On the lateral side, there are two important ligaments. The calcaneofibular ligament, which goes from the lateral malleolus to the side of the calcaneus, and this strong ligament, the interosseous talocalcaneal ligament, which goes from here on the calcaneus to here on the talus. To see that ligament better, we'll remove the talus. The interosseous talocalcaneal ligament lies between the subtalar joint and the TCN joint. Between the navicular and its neighbors, the cuneiform bones and the cuboid bone, there's hardly any movement, but there is a small amount of rotation between the cuboid and the calcaneus, which lets the front part of the foot invert and evert a little, independently of the calcaneus. Here's the tibia, the fibula, the medial malleolus, the lateral malleolus, the talus, and the ankle joint. Here's the interosseous membrane, the proximal tibiofibular joint, the distal tibiofibular joint, the posterior tibiofibular and talofibular ligaments, the anterior tibiofibular and talofibular ligaments, and the deltoid ligament. Here's the calcaneus, the cuboid, the three cuneiform bones, and the navicular. Here are the surfaces for the subtalar joint and for the TCN joint. Here's the calcaneo-navicular ligament, the calcaneo-fibular ligament, and the interosseous talocalcaneal ligament. Here's the extensor retinaculum, the perineal retinaculum, and the flexor retinaculum.